Now, it seems there's been an increase in the number of young girls and women using the services of homeless outreach organisations here in Limerick. And Aintu's Sarah Beasley, who runs an outreach service in the city, joins me now to talk about what is undoubtedly a worrying trend. And good morning to you, Sarah. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. How are you? Thanks for having me on the show. So just give us a sense of what you have been doing to help in recent times, and then we'll talk about the profile of the people that you've seen coming to you recently. Yeah, about three years ago, Joe, I actually was walking through town during lockdown and there was a homeless outreach um, going ahead. And it was three lovely ladies from Cork and they were known as the Street Angels. And they were actually coming down to feed the homeless in Limerick during lockdown when obviously they were still um, having to leave the shelters at nine o'clock in in the, the morning. So after a while, I volunteered with them and then they were pulling back because obviously they had their own outreach in Cork to do and there were limited numbers. So I just said I'd take over the pitch. So that's exactly what I did. Paint a picture for people of what happens, what you see generally. Yeah, well, what we do on a Monday evening is we set up a stall and we have soup and sandwiches, hot meals. We will have loads of clothes donated. So we will have heavy jackets. We will have layers uh, we will have socks, gloves, hats, the lot. And um, they come to the table and they'd have a chat with us first of all and then obviously they'd have food. They'd look through the clothes to see what was suitable for them. But in the three years, there was never up until about six months ago women that would actually come to the table. They'd be in the background, they might be across the road and the boyfriends would approach us and say, look, we're looking for a woman's jacket, maybe with a fur um, uh coat uh, with the fur, sorry, a fur hood and we'd search through the clothes and put a bag together but now the women are actually coming towards um, towards us and they're telling us shocking trends of why they can't go into the hostels absolutely shocking their self-esteem, their self-respect everything is gone and uh, I would say 95% of that is addiction Joe and the drugs are so strong out there at the moment on the street that these girls that were You know, a year ago, a size 14, 16, a healthy size, and now down to a four to a six in in size. Yeah. So actually looking for some children's clothes to fit the adults. Really? Yeah. Um, Sets of teeth decaying. Some of them are missing teeth. Um, Some of the hair is falling out. The skin condition is just horrendous. Uh, It's just... It's an awful thing to see someone just going from a beautiful looking girl with their makeup on, uh, so much self-respect to coming up to the table and they couldn't care whether they live or die. Are there more drugs available or is it also the type of drugs? Oh, there's more drugs available without a shadow of a doubt and it's the price of them. I mean, um, years ago, if you were looking for a bag of drugs, say, it was 50 euros, it's down to a fiver. The street tablets that are out there, I mean, we couldn't tolerate two. They're taking 20 to 30 a night, sometimes more. And it's to help them sleep through the homeless situation because I suppose in the the dark hours of of night, uh, they're out on the street, they're going to turn to alcohol and a mixture of drugs. Are you seeing, for example, more crack cocaine? Definitely, yeah. And a strong crack cocaine. You know, the, the, even the users are telling me it's so strong it can knock them out for 14 hours. And when they come around then, it's it's sugar. Oh, the sugar that they want. If you offer off them a coffee, you'd say jokingly, oh, do you want four or five sugars? Or say ten. And really? Ten sugars into it. Because of what it's doing to their system. Yeah, yeah. They just want that sweetness to... And if they're knocked out like that, they're vulnerable in all sorts of ways, including at the moment overnight to the cold. They're so vulnerable. They know they're vulnerable. Um, And a lot of the time, there could be a couple and the woman has a bed, but the boyfriend has, for different reasons, been excluded out of the hostels. So she won't leave him out on the street alone. So she'll sleep out as well. And she's so much more vulnerable to, you know, there's rape going on out there. They'll, they'll, they'll continuously tell me that they've been raped on the street or they've had to sell their bodies to get more drugs. And um, 
and that's what we're seeing. It's the the self esteem and self respect has just gone. Um, and once that happens, it's very difficult to bring them back from that dark place. How can people in that situation be helped? I mean, obviously, you're doing what you can. The only way to do it is have more beds available for um, addiction. When they're talking to me, some nights they'll say, Sarah, I go in now, but if you ring the, the addiction centres, there's an eight-week to 12-week waiting list. So we do need more beds uh we do obviously there's a lot of investment needed we could do with one around the city brewery is too far out but if we could actually get them at that moment in addiction when they need help so desperately if you could just take them by the hand put them into the car and drop them off at the center they might have some chance but we will be seeing far more deaths in homelessness this year i believe really and these are specific beds you're talking about rather than general hostel beds. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, they will, the, the, the nine to nine is there at nine o'clock at night. If you don't have a bed, you present yourself up there. But the, most of the time you're being turned away. And yet with the winter initiative that's there at the moment, because it's so cold, they can make beds. So if they can make beds up during the winter initiative, why can't they do that for the rest of the year? That's a, a big um, annoying thing for me at the moment. I get calls at nine o'clock at night. I've been refused entry. That's it. They're back out on the street. We're chatting to Sarah Beasley from Ain Two, who's also involved in helping the homeless on the streets, as she was explaining there. So are young women, uh, are women in general, more afraid to stay in a hostel than men? It's... It, it depends on the uh, obviously different different women. Uh, the single women are very vulnerable. Um, as I say again, uh, drugs are very cheap, but there's still the need for drugs um, is there. So obviously, all the time, even when they're in the hostel, they might be asking people for different type of drugs. They might be asking them for more tablets. Um, they might think that by staying with someone overnight in the hostel. Um, you know, selling their bodies, basically, that they get the drugs that they need to cope for that evening. Mm. Um, and how and why are more women becoming homeless in Limerick? I think it's very complex. I think there's breakdowns in families. I think that a lot, this addiction that's happening, the children are being taken away from them. And the thought of not seeing your children until you're 18, you've got to get clean, trying to get clean, trying to get into... Um, an addiction centre is all so very, it's so complex. But when you lose your children because you're an addict and they go through the system and that's it, they're taken away. As a mother, I can understand they just feel completely, completely at a loss. Sarah, what's the age range of these women that you're seeing coming to you in numbers you haven't before? Yeah, I'd say between 17 and about 35. You know, so the 17-year-olds are very vulnerable uh, young ladies that maybe have been thrown out of home, that maybe have had an argument with the parents, but rather than, than going and staying with friends or other family, they do sometimes find themselves wandering the street. They don't know what to do, where to go. Um, and then they might hook up with a couple of the boys, you know, the, the lads that are hanging around. Their intention is most probably good, but you just don't know. And we have seen from the successful and massive drugs hauls around the coast of Ireland in recent months, this is a huge industry of crime, isn't it? And obviously it's in their interest to get people like these young women hooked. Oh, that's it. That's why they reduced the price of the drugs. Because once they're hooked, they're hooked. And then they're looking for stronger and stronger drugs. And they could be in a drug den last night and if there's usage going on and someone has a better drug and they say here take this one that's how it's happening um it's just being introduced slowly and these very strong drugs are they leading to an increase in petty crime as a consequence oh, to pay for them big time big time they will go into town and shoplift till the cows come home and then again selling on really really cheap you know um, I've seen them come down to me trying to sell me clothes <laughs> from River Island with the tags on uh, but that's what they do and they sell like a 70 euro blouse for 10 euros it's just it's a constant um, I, I can't even describe it, it it's, it's just it, it's um, something that it's going to get worse 
I can't see unless, even with enforcement, it's not going to get better. Finally, Sarah, is there hope? Very little. Very, very little. Um, as I say, the street, the, the drugs, of li- the streets of Limerick are washed with drugs, and that's a fact. And I think anybody who walks through town can see that the increase of homelessness, and unfortunately, most of them are addicts. All right. Very depressing message this morning, uh, but thank you for bringing it to us. It's important that we highlight uh, these things, and it's a, a debate that will continue. I mentioned in the run-up to elections that are taking place as well. That is Sarah Beasley of AIM2, who also runs an outreach service in Limerick City, so is seeing this with her own eyes um, all the time. Thank you, Sarah. 